Assalamualaikum and greetings. Sarawak is working with Shell to explore and empower new sources of revenue from the state's forest sector. Chief Minister Dato' Pating Yamang Zohari Dramahajoping said the collaboration involved the forest sector such as carbon trading. He added the exploration of new sources of revenue will also include the ecotourism sector. He said this in his text of his speech that was read out by his deputy Dato' Amar Awang Tengah Ali Hassan at the opening of the Nan Timber Forest Products Carnival in Kuching. He also reiterated that the government would continue to step up efforts to eradicate illegal activities that could impact forest resources such as illegal logging. The Ministry of Welfare, Community Wellbeing, Women, Family and Childhood Development will take over all nurseries and kindergartens under the steady day management totaling to 82 units by 2019. Its Minister, Dr. Sri Hajar Fatima Abdullah, said the matter was already agreed in the Cabinet meeting. Okay. Jadi, Kementerian akan uh, telah diluluskan oleh uh, Cabinet bahawa Kementerian akan mengambil alih semua taska dan uh, tadika sedidik di seluruh Sarawak. So, all taska and tadika which has been under sedidik, the whole of Sarawak, Bermula pada tahun 2019. She was speaking at a press conference held after the launching of Wellbest Kitchen in Kuching. Earlier in her speech, she said Wellbest Kitchen, which is run entirely by Koperasi Usahawan Mikro Kebajikan Bersatu Berhad, aims to promote the products of entrepreneurs under the Usahawan Mikro Kebajikan. A total of 40 entrepreneurs from Kuching, Kota Samarahan, Sirian and Sriaman participated in the program which carried out various types of businesses such as dry food processing, cakes and pastries, spa services and others. The government is developing a plan to invest and further improve the country's digital infrastructure to ensure greater availability of broadband services by promoting competition. The Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission MCMC in a statement issued said it focused on digital infrastructure improvement and right-of-way issues that would continue to be discussed with the state government and local authorities. Other measures to consider would include liberalizing activities in the key strategic areas that lack competition as well as using all existing regulatory tools within its purview to ensure the availability of world-class infrastructure in Malaysia. And now the world news. The head of the UN's atomic watchdog call on North Korea to allow inspectors back into the country to monitor its nuclear program. Speaking at a board meeting of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Director General Yukia Amono noted that Pyongyang had in September talked about denuclearization measures including the permanent dismantlement of the nuclear facilities in Yongbyon, a reactor where it produces plutonium. Amano said there has been activity observed at Yongbyon, but without access, the agency cannot confirm the nature and purpose of the activities. Russia could deploy missiles on the territory of its allies if the U.S. stations similar weapons in Europe. Head of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the upper house of the Russian parliament, Konstantin Kostravev, said the U.S. intention to withdraw from the 1987 Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty could herald the way for deployment of missiles banned by the pact to Europe. He warned that if such deployment happens, Russia will target U.S. missiles with its weapons. That's all from me. For more news, go to tvsrock.com. Don't forget to share this video. I'm Iqbal Yusuf. Thanks for watching.